told Nick, I gave him strict orders, that I wanted the, the, the most brief introduction in the history of giving a talk, because I know this is for a lot of you, your last Thursday night in Athens, and I don't want to interfere in all of that. And to be, to be very honest with you, I've had a, a very challenging last couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to going downtown with a couple of you. <laughs> Let me be really honest. Uh, hey, it's really great to be here. Um, on so many different levels. I was thinking about it as I was flying up today uh, from Durham. I can remember, gosh, like it was yesterday. Of course, this group, the panel was brilliant, by the way. And as you were kind of talking about your five-year experience, I started doing the math in the back row and thinking, oh my god, for me, it's a 37-year experience that I'm going to talk from and about. And sports has really changed so much over those 37 years. Um, I'm not even sure the uh, industry really resembles itself a a at this point, but I I'm going to talk a little bit about that as I go through three or four different um, slides that I have for you. I actually have nine in total. But um, I, l let me just say, I had coached, my wife and I had been the track and field coaches at Central Michigan University in the 70s, in the mid-70s, and um, it was always just a, a thrill to come to Athens. I mean, because we had a chance to go to the, you know, to the place in the part of the country where it actually got warm from Mount Pleasant. And we loved, and we thought we were going down to Gainesville, or we were going down to Austin. We were going to go down to Athens. And uh, it was incredible to have the opportunity to come down here to the southernmost part of the Mid-American Conference and compete. And I fell madly in love with this place way back then. And then I remember years, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think, maybe 77, 78, um, something along those, those lines that you had a great track and field coach at Ohio and the grad student population wouldn't know this but his name was Stan Huntsman and a lot of the faculty would know that name and he went on to become a he was very successful at Ohio and then he went on to become a great coach at Tennessee he was our Olympic coach and then he coached at Texas and he's, he's now retired and I had actually had the opportunity to fill in for Stan on a, on a Saudi Arabia little, uh, little junket uh, to coach their national team, which wasn't so national uh, at that point in time, not to be offensive, but it was a bit of a, like a junior high team. And, uh, and it was in the late 70s, and a, a, a physiologist, you had a great, great uh, world-renowned physiologist here named Fritz Hagerman, and he was on the trip with us, so some of the faculty in the back are, are shaking heads. So I've always felt a little bit of a connection here, and then our son Danny came, and then of course then Brian, and uh, Tom Bay had been the athletics director here uh, uh, two athletics directors ago. One athletics director, two, two I guess, two athletics directors ago. And Tom had been with us for 10 years at different places at Loris and at Maine. So there's always been a little bit of me that's been some way, shape, or form tied to, to Athens, to, uh, to Ohio. So it's a great honor to be here with you. Uh, I, again, I have some thoughts uh, before I jump into them. Let me just say, again, as I kind of rep kind of referenced all of those little you know snippet connections I would be remiss if I didn't say you know Dr. Higgins was the icon of sport management in our country and now there's I think like 150 programs around the country uh, he was the leader of all leaders got all this going and as I kind of tell my story through some of my slides for some of you you may would you might be really surprised at just how far we've come or, or where we've come from in terms of sport administration and 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 for your generation I think that the real, you know, the acid test will be, and where are we going, and how will we get there? But uh, a real icon in the back, and Dr. Higgins, and of course he was followed by Andy, who was a brilliant leader, and now Jim has taken this thing to, uh, to, to yet the next level. So it's pretty exciting, and it is great to be here. Let me just say, I just finished teaching my 27th year. I've taught for 27 straight years, and I've always taught a graduate course in uh, sport administration. And so some of the stuff that I have for you to share with you for tonight are just, again, little, little snippets from my class, things I find myself thinking about uh, as hopefully as I've evolved, you know, sports has kind of evolved in parallel fashion. It's kind of morphed. I mean, sports, I've already said it, has pretty dramatically changed. But I can remember uh, it was only about two years ago that I had an opportunity to, to speak at a, at a commencement and my great friends from NACTOR here uh, Bob and Pat, and uh, I think they had a lot to do with it, but I had a, an opportunity to speak at the United States Sports Academy commencement, and I wanted to get something compelling to tell this uh, graduating group. And again, it was in July, it'll be, or June, it'll be two years uh, ago, and I had asked an economist at Notre Dame, and his name was Richard Sheehan, 
um, and he wrote a great book called uh, Economics of Big Time Sport, Keeping Score. Is anybody aware of that book? It's about 12 or 13 years ago when he, when he wrote the book, and it is tremendous. It is a tremendous piece on all the economics of, of major college athletics and the big four and, and the rest of the sporting community. It is really a well done uh, book and he's collected so much data and it's a shame that somebody hasn't updated it and hasn't done a, another one because it's ter terrific. I actually use the book uh, still today, even 13 years later in my, uh, in my course and you can get it online. Economics of Big Time Sport, Keeping Score, Richard Sheehan, and he's a professor at Notre Dame. Anyway, I went to Richard who has become a really good friend um, and we tend to argue about lots of things, particularly on the economic side as it relates to sport, because he's got some real strong opinion because he's collected empirical data. And I've got real strong opinion, uh, opinions because I've like had three or four beers with some people that I think are making some pretty important decisions. <laughs> and my data is different than his data sometimes. And so we have, these, we have this great relationship. And anyway, so as I'm being asked to speak at this commencement, I wanted something compelling. I said, Richard, help me kind of get my arms around what is sport financially, economically? What does it represent domestically and what does it represent globally? And he said, Kevin, I need like a week for that. And I said, well, you got it. I mean, I just really, I'd love to get a, a sense of that. I, I see all these little things in the Wall Street Journal and all these authors, kind of pundits, that they kind of guesstimate uh, uh, as to what sport really represents. But I'm not sure anyone's actually really dug down deep and, and, and has come up with a kind of a number we can stand behind with some kind of a reasonable formula. And so he does, and he comes back with this thing, and it just blew me away. And here's what he came back with. Now, it's th this little piece of, of, uh, of data developed by one of the leading sport economists in our country is two years old. And he, he suggested that sport in our country, your business, everybody in this room, your profession, represents $800 billion a year, all forms of sport, $800 billion a year. And it all re also represents about 6.1% of the gross domestic product. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I, I would also say that I found even more amazing that um, in terms of the global economy, he felt that sport represented uh, 2.5 trillion dollars a year and 4.5 percent of the global economy and this year I've had the opportunity to go to China twice I've been to Vietnam with a Nike trip and and I've seen some of the other parts of the world here in just recent months and, and over this past year even and I can tell you that sports is exploding it's just exploding around the globe and that's your business now that's who you are that's what you are that's your craft and I think the opportunities for this generation in sport are absolutely endless. I don't think you've unearthed them yet. And I don't know where you're headed, but I can tell you when I walked into Gulf High School in 1972 as a business teacher and a coach and ended up having, becoming a very young athletics director at this large public high school in the state of Florida because I had a telephone in my room because I got kids after, hour, after school hour jobs, it's changed dramatically since 1972, this whole business of sport. And I, I tell you what, I wish I was your age and I wish I had the opportunity to, to kind of take a, to be part of the next 37 years because it's, it's going to be truly fascinating. And, uh, and it's changing just rapidly, just really rapidly. But those are pretty interesting numbers. How about 6.1% of the, of the gross domestic product? How about 4.5% of the global economy? That's what sports represents now. And one or two quick digressions. I mean, I'm old enough where I can remember the impact Wilma Rudolph had uh, in the 1960 Rome Olympics. And they brought women into the game. I mean, we give a lot of credit to Title IX, but it was Wilma Rudolph in 1960 with the advent of television. And I can remember, I can remember down to the family checkbook in 1972 when I made twice as much as my wife, and she was a hell of a lot better track and field coach than I was but because of the inequity and, and everything that surrounded what had happened in the early 70s and, and as it worked its way through the, to the late 70s. I can remember in 1979 when all the pundits said, ESPN, what a stupid idea. Those were national headlines. This thing can never work. There's an oversaturation already in our country in terms of sports. And then I, you know, I see the platforms that have developed and so have you. I mean, Bill, Bill Rasmussen, who created that thing, was, was, was a heck of a visionary. Think of what he created. Um, and that's what you guys have the opportunity. You have an